of one of those areas is, is, is crime prevention of, of real crime. Now, ideally, and this and this thing that I'm talking about theoretically is something that's not even that theoretical because we're not very far away from this at all. Ideally, you bring the love, the idea of competition, not just to the level of companies, but essentially the level of countries, where you have different countries competing in what you know what we call like regulatory competition. You know, trying to offer like the best things to attract people to their country. Now, in the past, that might have been a bit of a pipe dream, but right now, I mean, the the countries that that I'm really looking to for for this, both in terms of you know, politics and also in terms of business, some of the countries, you know, since I work in education, building educational infrastructure, a lot of the countries I'm looking at are the ones that right now are almost like shell countries, a lot of the Caribbean countries. I think in the future, they have recognized that the biggest obstacle and the biggest advantage to any country is its people. If those people are hardly working, if you can attract the people that are gonna produce, the, there is nothing more valuable than human capital. But at the same time, if you're just going to attract the people that are going to be there to just sit around like parasites, then <coughs> there's nothing that's more problematic in your people. So you see in the, in the Caribbean laws, in the Cayman Islands, for example, they're super specific. They say the Cayman Islands is not a welfare state. And they pass like, certain like visa restrictions, these like sort of two-year work visas, to really prevent anybody from being in a situation where they're dependent on the government. And that, because right now, a lot of, I mean, with, with Skype, with the internet, you know, the people who I hire, some of them are in California, some of the people I work with are in Asia, I mean, some of them, they're all over the place. The barriers to doing work, you know, thousands of miles apart, for at least for, you know, sort of like, you know, white collar type technical work, is gone. So, in a real sense, in, in the current sense, I consider myself a minarchist. In the long term, I really think that, that sort of governmental regulatory competition is going to happen. And I really think that just as, as both from the business perspective and from the political perspective, you know, I've said to so many people, the liberty movement is not just an American movement, it's a world movement. In the same way that socialism was a world movement, I go to that. I was saying, the same way that socialism is a world movement, I think the liberty movement is a world movement. I think we need to fight for liberty, not just to America, but to South America and to Africa and the Caribbean and Asia, because eventually, if we have more competition, I mean, right now we're comp competing to see who can be the most socialist. Let's see if we can compete to see who can be the most, you know, liberty-minded or libertarian. But like, you know, in my heart, I'm very much a philosophical libertarian that I, you know, I really, you know, like to think about the idea of government and things like that. But as a teacher, I've also recognized that that you know the philosophical ideas have a have an audience, but it's a small audience. So it just in terms of, of, of bringing people, you know, it's, it's it's not to me. It's not just about taking people who are kind of naturally super individualistic and making them more so, but taking people who are a little uncomfortable with these ideas and just you know bringing them, inviting them to really think about something in a way that's friendly and, and accessible to them. So you know that's why a lot of times I spend more time talking about you know, things like the fair tax. I really think they need to. I mean, first of all, I think they need to happen at the same time because as sure as I know anything. I know that if there's a way to increase taxes, especially if there's a way for 90% of the people to increase the taxes of the remaining 10%, as sure as I know anything in politics, that'll happen. Mm -hmm. So in order for that to not happen, we have to make it impossible. The local consensus that what is the role of the government? It's there to protect our fundamental rights, and that's it. I mean, our, our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence, it's not something that, say, that says that you know we're creating this government to make us better people, or we're creating this government so that it can like you know one day create something else. Or we're doing and the point of this government is here. Right? It's here to protect our right to life, our right to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and again, it's only the pursuit that's guaranteed, not the not the end result. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things I that that, that, that the Libertarian Party you know, kind of uh, are going forward that that I've been else? talking to, to the state level and and some of the, the LNC folks about is this. There are so many people who are smart, who are super qualified, who are intelligent, that think because, and you know, when, they, when those people took like, you know, economics, they had to take a prerequisite for that, they think that there's some kind of prerequisite for politics, that prerequisite maybe work for a special interest or, or I don't know. I mean, these are people who have worked their own jobs or run their own businesses. These are the, I mean, these are the people we need in politics. So a big part of, I think, just to, to expand on that, is 
talking to the people, saying, look, if you understand these issues, if you can convey them reasonably, you know, well, if you're willing to really understand policy and take some time to do it, you know, you're the type of candidate that needs to be running. The career politicians, it's not just that we need to get rid of them. I don't think they're doing their job as well as the average person would. I think they're doing their job, or even forget the average, as well as the sort of, you know, extraordinary person would. And I think they're doing their job badly. I think that the career politician is the wrong choice because they don't know what the rest of us go, to, go through. They don't understand what we're dealing with. 